this happened when I was 15 years old. My best friend Anthony wanted me to come over for the night, since his parents would be gone all weekend. I rode my bike over and put it in his backyard before letting myself in through his back door. We played basically every video game he had, from FIFA all the way to Call of Duty, with popcorn and other junk food spilled out all over the floor. As the night progressed, we moved from video games to watching half a movie and getting bored to doing prank calls at close to 10 o'clock. Anthony made a few calls to different pizza places. When it was my turn, I just dialed a few random numbers in hopes to get someone at their house. On say, my fourth attempt, I finally reached somebody. A guy with a deep and rough voice picked up, answering with a yeah instead of a hello. Anthony's laughing in the background made me stumble with my words mid-sentence, ultimately cracking up into laughter. I had never done a prank call, so I sucked at it. The guy on the other end was silent. I regained a straight face and tried to continue with the call. It went something like this. Uh, sir, would it be alright if I borrowed one of the wheels from your car? What's your name, kid? My name is Bob. Really? You sure it's not Anthony? It hit me like a brick. I looked up at Anthony, whose face was noticeably full of fear. I hung up the phone, not wanting to be on the line with whoever that was for another second. Anthony, who the hell was that? I asked him. I, I don't know, he told me. Does your caller ID info display your name or something? No, it shows my dad's name. We hopped on the computer and did some research, trying to figure out how it was possible to get someone's name through their phone number. It didn't make sense how he could get Anthony's name so quickly. He was way too young at the time to be on any of those personal information sharing websites. We ended up asking a question on Yahoo Answers, since no one had a similar experience. The question turned up no answers. I suggested he call his dad, but he said he wasn't supposed to have anybody over for the weekend, so he didn't want to call. We planned on sleeping in the living room, so we just resumed watching the movie that we hadn't finished from earlier. Right after the phone call had left my mind, me and Anthony looked at each other when we heard his front storm door opening, and then the doorknob to the front door began to turn. It only was able to turn about halfway before the lock restricted it. Anthony turned off the TV, and I went over to the window to see who it was. I spread the blinds open. There was a tall guy standing outside. He noticed the blinds moving, and turned to look at me. I practically threw the blinds back into place. Me and Anthony hid in the kitchen, listening for any more noises. We heard the sound of the gate to the backyard opening, as it was right outside the kitchen window. God damn it, I said. I forgot to shut the back door. Anthony urged me to run and shut it. I made it to the hallway leading to his back door, and froze. There was a silhouette standing outside the back door. I don't think he noticed me, but... He was surely looking into the house. He opened the door and stepped inside. I tiptoed to the kitchen and motioned for Anthony to follow me upstairs. We made it to his room as quietly as possible, pulling the door shut to avoid making any noise. We crawled under his bed. He had cloth covering the bottom of his bed, so you couldn't see anything under it unless you actually moved the cloth. The doors downstairs all opened, each one getting closer to the stairs. Thumps finally began up the stairs, and he was right outside the door now. The door to the room opened. I could hear Anthony's breathing. It was too loud. Footsteps moved over to the closet, and then the closet opened. I could hear the coat hangers being slid around as the fabric of the jackets and coats rubbed against each other. Footsteps moved over to the bed and stopped. I felt like my heart was about to explode out of my chest. Anthony's breathing was too loud. I had to cover his mouth with my hand. Nothing but silence in the room now. We laid still for so long, I almost thought he wasn't even in the room anymore. I moved my hand away from Anthony's mouth and whispered in his ear, You think we can make a run for it? He was about to answer, when the most disturbing, Memory-haunting scream I'd ever heard filled my ears 
as Anthony was seemingly dragged out from under the bed. I crawled out and saw him struggling with the man. I desperately looked around for anything to use as a weapon. I settled with the screwdriver sitting on his nightstand. I hurried over to the man and drove the screwdriver into his back. He let go of Anthony as he let out a scream of agony, giving us time to get the hell out of the house. Running onto the road would give away our position too easily. It would take too long to make it to his neighbor's house. We dove for the tree line in the woods and took cover behind a bush, watching the house. The back door opened as the man stepped outside, looking around the backyard. He then looked out to the woods. I felt his eyes pass me as he scanned through the tree line. It seemed that it was too dark for him to see us. Then, he turned his head back in our direction. I ducked behind the bush. Joe, he's coming. What? Dude, get up, we gotta run. He was right. The man was approaching us fast. How could he have seen us? We ran through the woods with the leaves crunching under us, giving away our position. When Anthony tripped over something, I crouched down with him, hoping we had run far enough. Not even 20 seconds later, oncoming footsteps from the direction we were running from came fast. They slowed down only two trees away from us as we lay face down in the leaves. Moments later, the footsteps take off in another direction. We waited until we could no longer hear them and took off back in the direction of the house. While running, over the sound of leaves crushing and my heavy breathing, I could swear I heard leaves crushing from behind us. We made it back to his backyard, into his house, and this time remembering to shut the back door. We were now able to call the police. Anthony stayed on the line with them while I patrolled the back windows making sure nobody was out there. It was so dark though, I couldn't see anything. So I did something that seemed stupid today. I turned on his backyard lights, and immediately in the distance, over by the woods, I saw him, standing in front of a big tree. He turned off back into the woods and disappeared out of sight. That was the last time me or Anthony ever saw him. I would be lying if I told you we heard the occasional knocks at our windows or something cliche. No, that was it. Five years have passed and nothing has happened. Do I wonder if it was somehow linked to the prank call? Maybe. Does it make sense? Not really. But yeah, this was the story of how me and my still best friend Anthony almost died during a break-in.